CN8 Sports today has come to Harris Field at Princeton High School for high school football as the West Windsor Plainsboro North Knights take on the Princeton Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Paul Spahala and welcome to a slightly overcast day here in Mercer County for this matchup between West Windsor Plainsboro North coming in at two and four and the Princeton Tigers currently four and two. West Windsor North won the toss, and Art Stubbs, the head coach, elected to defer. Princeton will receive to our left. Kickoff is on the way. Picked up by Jordan. And Jordan is stopped a little bit short of the 20-yard line, so that is where Princeton will start from on the first possession of this football game. Tigers are going to come out and start their first possession on right about the 15-yard line. Spot the ball at the Tiger 15, and that's where Princeton will start from today. We had a chance to see the Princeton Tigers two weeks ago in a big win over Hopewell Valley. Once again, that is Art Stubbs on the far sideline. His club coming in at 2-4 and four on the season. They are coming off a 35-0 loss to Hamilton, which snapped a two-game win streak. I'm not quite sure what the delay is for right now. There we go. All right, they've got the football on the field that they're happy with. Princeton with the ball, starting at their own 15-yard line. We certainly will keep an eye on Doug Borchard in the backfield. When we were here two weeks ago, he had 20 carries for 167 yards and a pair of touchdowns against Hopewell Valley. He's the lone man in the backfield. Fake to Borchardt, throw to Miranda. Pass might have been deflected. From Ryan, intended for John Miranda, the ball is incomplete. Ben Newman, and ten now the defensive the tackle, might have gotten a piece of it. So Miranda, the intended target of the pass. Bozich, Merrill, Lavoy, Borchardt, Connor Ryan as the quarterback. Murphy, Hines, Jocalone, Cefeli, and Simpson up front for Princeton. Connor Ryan is the quarterback. Second and 10. It is Borchardt. And he is wrapped up right away by Ben Newman. Picks up two yards. Two on the play, call it third and eight for Princeton. Defensively for the Northern Knights. Steinhilbert, Kaplan, Newman, and Schmidt up front. Gone, Mulhall, Simpler, and Beliza are the linebackers. And the secondary, Kenavan, Reed, and Van Dyke. Third and eight for Princeton. Ryan looking to his right, completes it to Miranda. And that will be enough for a Princeton first down. Well, if you happen to catch our game two weeks ago against Hopewell Valley, John Miranda, a senior, turned in one of the great catches that you will see on the high school level. He is a sure-handed receiver. Nice delivery by Ryan right into the hands of Miranda. And he will take it for a Princeton first down. So the Tigers convert a third and eight into another set of downs. There you see John Miranda, five foot nine senior. And pretty much if you get the ball near his hands, he will come down with it. First and 10, Princeton. Ryan looking to throw. A little bit behind Miranda that time. Ryan's pass intended for Miranda. Ball is incomplete. It'll bring up a second and 10 for the Tigers. Princeton coming into this one at four and two. Both these clubs are in Central Jersey group three. This is the seventh week of the high school season. Eight power points on the line for Princeton, 10 on the line for West Windsor North. Pretty simple in terms of the playoffs. We'll get to that in just a moment. Second and 10, it's Borchard once again. Borchard going left, trying to string the play out. 
Kenavan had a shot at him, but it will be very close to, if not, a Princeton first down. Knocked out by Van Dyke. First and 10, Princeton. Borchert was the offensive player of the week two weeks ago for that performance against Hopewell Valley. And you'll get a look why he is such a strong runner. Six foot one, 200 pounds. Does a great job of following his blocking. In this case, it's Jordan Simpson. There, the stiff arm, which kept away Kenavan. And Borchert will take it across midfield into West Windsor North Territory. First down, Princeton, second of the drive. Ryan checks right, throws to Miranda, and just as Miranda got his hands on it, he was met by Steve Grierson. Grierson number 36 on the coverage, and will bring up second and 10. So Princeton has come out throwing today. They've thrown on each of the first three first downs in this possession. For West Windsor Plainsboro North, the equation is simple. You must be at least 500 on the state cutoff date they are two and four so they must win their next two and even with that they've got a lot of teams to jump over in order to make the top eight for Princeton the equation a little bit simpler a win this week will help a win next week will be crucial we'll tell you why in just a moment second and ten for the Tigers Borchert running left Flag on the play. Borchard forced out of bounds after a short game, but we did have a penalty marker thrown. Flag on the play. Flag came out early. Now there was movement on the defensive line, and then there was the flag thrown in as the play began. First two minutes of the ball game, 10.02 to go first quarter. I'm Paul Spahali. You're watching high school football here on CN8 Sports. Personal foul will go against Princeton. Personal foul against Princeton. West Windsor North is a group three club with two wins, and that's why today's game has an eight-point value for Princeton. But next week, Princeton will take on West Windsor Plainsboro South, a group four school that currently has five wins, so a 13-point game possible next week. And if South defeats Notre Dame on Sunday, it would be a 14-point game. So clearly that game will be the make or break for Princeton in terms of power points. After the 15-yard penalty. Depending on how things shake out, they might be able to get in without a win next week. There you see Steve Everett, uh, obviously not happy with the call. Personal foul sets his Tigers back second and long. Fake to Borchard, play action, pressure coming from the backside. And Ryan is met by Grayson Van Dyke. There you see number two, Grayson Van Dyke. Third and long for the Tigers. Third down, spot the ball back at the 31-yard line. Tigers need to get to the Knights' 37. So it's third and 32 coming up for Princeton. Ryan looking right, tipped Ryan by Eric Miranda Simpler, intended for Three Miranda. And David Griffin will be into punt. Prior to the game, the singing group around eight did our national anthem, and David Griffin, who is the Princeton punter and place kicker, is a member of that group. Kick comes to the near sideline. It'll hitch just across the 50, and it will be fielded by Matt Young, just barely in Northern Knight territory. The Knights are gonna take over. 8.53 to go, opening quarter. Three minute drive for the Tigers, and 
after a couple of first downs, they will turn it over on the punt. So spot the ball in good field position for the Northern Knights. They will start at their own 49-yard line. Tim Owa is the quarterback, a 5'11 junior. And it is Cefeli who breaks the line of scrimmage for Princeton. Offside on the Tigers. Owa goes 5'11", 220, built more like a fullback than a quarterback, but he is running the show for the Northern Knights this year. Matter of fact, he was voted a captain for West Windsor North. Which was the first time in Art Stubbs' six year as head coach that a junior has been elected captain. So that's how much his teammates think of Timmy Owa. Mark all five against the Tigers, first and five for West Windsor Plainsboro North. Steinhilber in motion, the pitch back to Reed. Reed finds a hole and will have first down yardage. Picks up about eight, tackled by Borchert. Good enough for a night first down. So Reed takes it for a first down. The Knights move the chain to the Princeton 38. First down at that spot. West Windsor North 2-4 and four this season. They're coming off a 3-7 and seven season last year. Give to Reed. And Reed is wrapped up after maybe a yard. Cefeli. Stops him after a gain of two. second and eight for the Knights. Very strong Princeton defense. Again, going back to that game two weeks ago against Hopewell Valley. That was an impressive 31-0 win that day for the Tigers. Second and eight for the visitors. Mulhall in motion. Reed again. Big opening. Borchert wraps him up. But it will be close to a first down for West Windsor Plainsboro North. Reed a sophomore. The Knights are going without probably their key running back, Darren Parrott. He is here but on crutches today. And there you see the run by Reed, which will be just short of a first down. About half a yard to go for West Windsor Plainsboro North. Second school was added, oh, about seven years ago in the district, and they went with the long name West Windsor Plainsboro, both north and south. Reed, hit in the backfield, slowed down. He got just barely to the 30-yard line. And a crucial early decision for Art Stubbs. Three now for the night. Fourth down, right at the 30-yard line. A little over two yards to go. Here is another look at the great charge. It was Cefeli who hit him first, then Lavoie, and finally he is brought down by Young. Fourth and short distance. We had movement. We have whistles. Procedure the against the That's offense. Now, I don't think that's going to change Art Stubbs' decision to go for it on fourth down, but clearly play selection will be different. Ball's rested at the 35-yard line. Joe um, seven now Owa the is the punter the also. So Owa, the quarterback, is the punter. Let's see where he will line up. He's going to be in the shotgun, which, of course, raises the possibility of a quick kick for Owa. He will drop back. He'll throw across the middle, completed at the 10-yard line. He finds Ryan Fallon, who is the backup quarterback. And it will be a first down for West Windsor North. Owa has plenty of time, steps up in the pocket, and there you first see Phelan will the catch night. it just at about the 12. It'll be first and goal for West Windsor North. Place the ball at the five yard line. Pitch back to Reed. 
Reed tries to duck inside. Savelli wraps him up. Little, if any, gain on the play. It'll be second and goal for the Northern Knights. 5.30 to go. 5.30 remaining and the clock on the move here in quarter number one. No score, but the Northern Knights are threatening. Oa in a shotgun. He's got Mulhall to his right. Now Oa will step up under center. He'll take it himself through the five. Touchdown, Timmy Oa. And so the Knights jump out to the 6 0 lead. 6 0 lead here with 4.55 left to go in the first quarter. Credit Timmy O with a five-yard touchdown run in West Windsor Plainsboro North has the early 6-0 lead. Joe Benke is the place kicker. Benke in the kick. Van Dyke is the holder. We have a flag thrown in the defensive backfield. Flying in the backfield. Substitution infraction called against Princeton. Substitution infraction called there on the Tigers. Benke's kick is no good. Benke's kick is no good. So at the 4.55 mark of the opening quarter, it is West Windsor Plainsboro North 6. Princeton nothing. Take a look at the touchdown run by Oa. Remember, he was in the shotgun formation, stepped up under center, takes the snap, and is able to survive the hit by Lavoie at the goal line for a 6 nothing Northern Knight lead. Take it back to the extra point. Pressure will come from the left side, and the kick will tail off to the left. So, 6 0 West Windsor Plainsboro North lead. There you see Tim Owa. And so, Owa's big pass to Phelan for the first down on fourth and eight, the key play of that drive. And then following a short gain, if anything, on first down, Ola punches it home on second and goal. Low bouncing kick fielded at the 35-yard line. And he's in Meister field, the kick from Newman. Tires are going to take over at the 35-yard line with the first and 10. 4.55 to go, first quarter, West Windsor Plainsboro North 6, Princeton nothing. I'm Paul Spahala. You're watching high school football here on CN8 Sports. Princeton is coming off a two-game winning streak. They've won their first two, lost their next two, and won their next two. Borchard has an opening right side. He'll pick up about six on the play before Eric Simpler wraps him up. Tackle by Simpler. Second and three there for the Tigers. Borchert used to a, a lot of work in the backfield. He had 32 carries against Notre Dame back in week number four. There you see the big opening. Simpler, number 50, fights off his blocker and is able to record the tackle, but credit uh, a gain of seven on the play for Borchard, second and three for the Tigers. Pitch back to Borchard, has a man in front of him, uses the block, gets to the sideline, flag on the play. Ryan toss to Borchard. Holding against Princeton. Flag on the play, holding on the Tigers.
Borchardt had to get across the 45, which he did, so it would have been a Tiger first down, but the penalty will mark Princeton back 10 yards. Princeton coming off a four and six season last year, which was the first step backwards in this, the sixth season of Steve Everett's head coaching here at Princeton. One win the first year, then two. Five and five in 04. Six and four in 05, barely missing the playoffs. But then a little bit backwards step last year, four and six. And they've already got those four wins this season. Second and 12. Ryan checks down the middle, pass intercepted. Picked off by Joshua Harrison. Ryan's pass is intercepted by Harrison. Tackle by John Miranda. There's a flag on the play. There is a marker on the play. Illegal block. Post possession. So the Northern Knights will keep the football but it will put them back on their half of the field. Take another look at it on the replay. Ryan checks left, goes across the middle. His pass sails high, however, into the hands of Harrison right at the 50. So West Windsor, Plainsboro North will keep possession. The ball will be marked back into their own territory. Just waiting to see where the spot will be, the 46, and that's where it will be. So for the second time today, West Windsor starts almost at midfield. Reed, who had the bulk of the carries on that first possession, will go for about five yards on first down. Reed will take it right to the midfield stripe. Gain of four. four. Second and six for the Knights. West Windsor coming into this season had lost 16 of their last 20. They were one and nine in 2005, three and seven last year. Second and six. Reed slips on the turf. Give the Reed a slip in the backfield. Reed uh, was looking to go to the right side of the line, saw that it was clogged up by the Tigers, and when he tried to plant his foot and hook it outside, you'll see on the replay, he's just gonna, that left foot is just gonna come right out from under him. He fights to keep his balance, stiff arms the ground, and finally his knee hits. Third down, about eight. Oa, pressure coming, penalty marker. Oa's wrapped up in the backfield. He was pressured by Luke LeRoy. We are going to get a Tackled holding against the Knights. And more than likely, that will be declined. It would bring up fourth at about 13. Holding against the offense, no penalty surprise, is penalty is declined. You get Fourth the extra 10 14, yards, of course, but remember that uh, oh, Owa hit Phelan for that long pass on the last drive, third and long. So rather than give the Knights a, another shot, will be back to for the, Tigers. the Tigers choose to get the football back. John Miranda steps back to receive for Princeton. And Owa does the punting for the Northern Knights. Owa back to punt for the night. Line drive over Miranda's head, takes a sideways bounce at about the 10, and that will be a good kick for Timmy Ola. Oh, boots that punt. 2-0-1 to go in the opening, the opening quarter. Five or six yard line. And Where Princeton will start over. deep in their own territory. So we've seen Oa at quarterback, he punts the ball. So he is a 
multi-dimensional player for this West Windsor Plainsboro North Club. Doesn't play defense. He's not on the depth chart I was given. I haven't seen him yet out on the field. Let's call it the eight yard line for Princeton. I formation. Borchert reads his block, cuts outside, headed for the sideline. Harrison has a shot at a miss him. Borchert still going, cuts inside, fights his way out beyond the 30, maybe the 35. Well, two weeks ago when we were here, one of the things we commented about, in particular, Doug Borchert, he does an outstanding job of reading his blockers. Watch Jay Dwyer, number 77, leads the way. Borchert reads that block, cuts to the outside, and watch this move he's going to make right here to avoid Harrison. Picks up another downfield block by Joe DeRamo, and that will give him an extra 10 yards. So Borchert reading the blocks of Dwyer and then DeRamo. This is Trevor Barsamian. Barsamian comes in to give Borchard a little bit of breather. Barsamian, a five foot nine sophomore. Give him two on the play, second and eight for the Tigers as we have hit the one minute mark. Knights six, Tigers nothing. Less than a minute to go, opening quarter. Again, it's Barsamian as the tailback. Lavoy in front of him. Barsamian, nice cut inside. He's got the first down. He's at the 50. He's in Northern Knight territory. Barsamian found the big opening to the left of the offensive line. Lavoy leading the blocking, but Barsamian sees a big gap, runs it up the middle. Simpler finally has to slow him down along with help by Grierson and spot the ball inside the 45. Barsamian to the sideline, Borchert back in. Pitch back to Borchert. Borchert hurdles one tackler, but is brought down a loss on the play. And ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for the opening quarter. The West Windsor Plainsboro North Knights have jumped out to a 6-0 lead. We will be back with second quarter football action right after this. It begins innocently enough. You don't return a phone call. You break a date at the last minute. But in fact, it's the beginning of a pattern. And soon, your friend with mental illness realizes you're avoiding them. But what if you knew that your friendship was the key to their recovery? Would you still lock them out of your life? Steve Everett on the field, pleading his case to the officials. And coming away frustrated. His club trails 6-0. Princeton has not qualified for the football playoff since 1993. Again, they have a good chance to snap that streak this year. Again, today's win will be big. Next week's will have lots of power points. And with that in mind, and with so many teams qualifying in Central 3, it almost becomes a necessity for Princeton to win both these games. Pitch back to Borchert. Spun around in the backfield, trying to break a tackle of Newman, but Newman holds on. Newman. 
And so it will bring up a third and 15 for the Tigers. Watch number 61, Ben Newman, comes into your picture right there. Wraps up Borchard and is able to hold him on at the waist. And it's not an easy thing to do. Borchard, a very strong runner at 6'1", 200. But Newman able to bring him down one-on-one. -on -one. Third and 15 for the Tigers. Miranda split to the right. A new player recently added for Princeton, Daquan Holman, number three, is split out to the left. Olentine at quarterback, looking for Holman. We have a flag thrown in. The flag on the play. Now the key question is, which way will it go? We have interference against the offense. So Olentine is in at quarterback, or at least was for that play. So here's the call, right, so interference. It is a loss of down. So it will be fourth down, so it's distance and down against the Tigers. And so it'll bring up fourth down, and that brings Griffin, Griffin back on the field. The kicking to Harrison and Reed. Harrison number six, Reed number 23, back to receive four. West Windsor North. High snap, Griffin brings it down. Floats a kick down the middle of the field. Reed calls for the fair catch and takes it at the, the 35, 36. Fair catch by Reed. 10.57 to go in the half. West Windsor, Plainsboro, North, six. Princeton, nothing. I, I would often say the whole school name and nickname, West Windsor, Plainsboro, North, Northern Knights, but if I say that more than three times, the game will end. So I'll offend some people in the district by just calling them either West Windsor North or the Knights. From the 36, Reed comes to the right. Gets around Borchard. Borchard, however, fights off his block and runs West him down. Stretches Reed out on that play. Borchard and Josh Gordon in on the tackle. So Reed, who has had Gain success running between the tackles, not as much luck getting outside as Borchard able to string the play out and then get away from his blocker and bring him down. So let's see if the Knights return to running Reed between the tackles where he has had success so far. Second and nine for the visitors. And it is Reed, and again, between tackles, Reed a little bit more success. Tackle by Borchert. It'll bring up third, and we'll call it four for West Windsor North. West Windsor North was five and five back in 2003, six and four the next year, and the last two seasons they slipped. We already told you they were one and nine and three and seven. Third and four for the Knights. Pitch back to Reed. And before Reed can get going, Luke Lavoy tracks him down. Lavoy led these Tigers in tackles last year. And believe it or not, he is playing with a dislocated shoulder. Number 34, Lavoy fights through and drops the ball carrier, and that will send Oa back to punt. There is a breeze that is at Oa's back, so that might help him out a little bit on this kick. Low line drive kick away from Miranda. It will hit and go out near the 20. Maybe the just inside the 20. Right about the 20 yard line, which is where the Tigers will take over on the first and 10. So the ball will be spotted at the Princeton 19-yard line. 8.47 to go in the half.
And it is Olentine back at quarterback. So Mike Olentine, the sophomore, in at quarterback. He pitches back to Borchard. Borchard cuts in. Stiff arms a tackler. Stiff arms another. In front of the Princeton bench. Still going. Tries to put a move on Grierson. Grierson can't knock him down. Borchard still going. 10-5 touchdown, Princeton. An 81-yard touchdown run by Doug Borchert. And the Tigers have tied it up at 6-6. Six six. Griffin on for the go-ahead point. His kick on the way, and Princeton has taken a 7-6 lead. Borchert will go 81 yards, and here it is. Lavoy leading the blocking to the outside. Borchert cuts it inside. Stiff arms one man. Lavoy again out in front of the play. There's the other stiff arm. Now watch this move coming up along the sideline as Grierson the cornerback comes after him. Borchert faked going inside. Grierson had a shot at him, could not push him out of bounds. And Borchert survives the trip up on the ankle and he takes it the final distance for the score. Doug Borchert, 81 yards for the touchdown. It took him 20 seconds to go the distance. Van Dyke and Kevin back to receive for the night. And with the extra point, Princeton, for the first time today, has the lead 7 6. At least three defenders had a legitimate shot at Borchard, including Grierson along the sideline. So Griffin will kick it away. Reed is the middle of three deep men, and the wind gusts that are remaining from the showers and the storms that drenched, well, most of the East Coast, in particular New Jersey, blow the ball off the tee. Obviously, field turf, it is in outstanding shape, but there were just torrential rains all throughout the East Coast yesterday. As a matter of fact, cancel the game we were scheduled to do that has a lot of importance to these two teams. Griffin's kick long, end over end. Reed catches it. And he will Griffin down it in the end zone. Nope, oh, hold on. Wasn't nope. in the end zone. So he's down to that about the two. It is being marked at the two. So the Knights are going to start with the ball deep in their own territory. Reed caught the ball deep. Might have assumed he was in the end zone. But he will kneel down at the two. And that will be a huge... I believe what our official is saying that since he caught it in play and brought it into the end zone, he was not able to bring it out. First, and first down from the two. Owa on the sneak trying to buy a little bit of yardage. Owa with the keeper trying to force his way up a couple yards. Now yesterday we were scheduled to tape the game between Red Bank Catholic and Long Branch. Long Branch is also in Central Jersey Group 3. And so... That game, or at least the Long Branch portion of that game, has a big effect on both of these clubs. Long Branch currently number seven in the PowerPoint rankings. Oh, we've got about two yards on the play, second and eight. On the reverse, gives to Mulhall. Mulhall wrapped up by Cefeli. Oh, with a little inside handoff. 
Let's show you the uh, the kickoff play one more time. There is the catch by Reed. Oh, a will quick kick it, and he floats one out towards midfield. Nobody back for Princeton, of course. Takes a night roll into Princeton territory, and it will stop at about the 46-yard line. So Princeton takes over 6.57 to go in the half. So the Tigers will start the ball with their own territory here. That's the 46. Doug Borchert went 81 yards with some great blocking and some outstanding individual effort along the near sideline. Griffin's extra point has given Princeton the first lead of the ball game for the Tigers. From the 46, Borchert, uh, excuse me, that's Barsamian. Barsamian with the carry. And I'll admit that I fall into that habit also. Borchard, who will get about 30 carries on any given day. If you might, if you say his name, you're going to be right, oh, 80% of the time. <laughs> but it was Barsamian on the carry, uh, maybe a yard on the play. Barsamian has had some uh, good yardage in relief of Borchard. But it is a second and we'll call it nine for the Tigers. 6.25 to go in the half. So it's Lavoie in front of Barsamian in the Tiger backfield. Barsamian reads the block. Nice stiff arm. Still going. He's got a blocker in front of him, but he's wrapped up from behind by Beliza. Barsamian with a about a 20-yard pickup or so. And he will take it near the 30. Watch the play by Barsamian. This is very similar to the play that Borchert ran for the touchdown. He cuts inside the block, a great stiff arm at the 50, and then he just shrugs off two other tacklers, and finally it is Len Beliza who runs him down from behind. Barsamian, big opening. Now remember, Princeton came out throwing. And although they had a little bit of luck, they have decided to go back to their very potent ground game and the combination of Borchard and Barsamian and that outstanding offensive line have allowed the Tigers to move this football. That was just a huge gap that Barsamian ran through. Borchard back in. Lavoy stays in as the blocking back. It is Borchert. He cuts in, spins away from a tackle, forced out of bounds. We do have a penalty marker on the play, and it's going to go against the defense. Penalty on the night. Here's another look at it on the replay. Illegal block on the Knights. Gonna give the Tigers extra yardage there after the run. Well, the signal that the official gave us was for an illegal block. And we are going to get a timeout. West Windsor, Plainsboro. Timeout, Knights. With 4.53 to go in the half.
So we have 453 left to go here in the first half. The Tigers leading the night seven to six. Coming up for Princeton next week. As we said earlier, they've got that big matchup with West Windsor Plainsboro South. That will be here at Harris Field. That's a crucial matchup as South is a group four school, which is of course worth more power points. South coming in at five and one. Big game with Notre Dame rained out yesterday, rescheduled for the day after we are taping this one. They'll play that game on Sunday. And then Princeton closes out their regular season at Trenton on November 3rd. For the Knights, they have Lawrence next week, and unfortunately that will bring back some terrible memories for West Windsor North. Last year, Lawrence defeated the Knights 76 to nothing on the day before Halloween. And that was scary. 76 0 was the final last year. Borcher cuts inside, breaks a tackle, still going at the five, dives for the end zone, he's in. And so Doug Borchard with his second touchdown of the quarter. Gonna bring. Griffin for the PAT. Seven yard run for Borchert. And Princeton stretches their lead to 13-6. Griffin on for the extra point. And it is a 14-6 advantage for Princeton. So 4.44 left to go in the second quarter. The Tigers lead West Windsor Plainsboro North 14-6. Borchert will break a tackle at about the line of scrimmage. Spins away from one man, getting a great block also by his uh, tight end. In this case, it's Matt Young. And right at the goal line, Beleza will hit him. And Borchert is just going to have enough to fall into the end zone for the score. And I know I mentioned it many times two weeks ago, and I've already said it a couple times today, but Princeton does a great Griffin job of blocking, and Borchardt does an outstanding job of following those They're blocks. This is just an extremely good running offense for the Princeton Tigers. They've got the 14-6 lead. Griffin will kick it away. Another long kick, this time Reed will let it roll into the end zone for the touchback. Griffin's kick goes into the end zone for a touchback. So the Knights will take over and start this drive at their own 20 with a first and 10. Now the other factor that is, I've always said one of the biggest factors on the high school level in particular is field position, starting field position. Remember the first two West Windsor drives started at their own 49 and their own 46. These last two drives at the two and now at the 20. First down Knights trailing by eight. Oa rolls. Deflected. Joe DeRamo got his hand up and broke up the pass. Joe DeRamo, six foot two, stretched out the hand on the rollout, knocked it away. It'll bring up second and ten. Watch for number nine. It is back to you right now. He'll follow the quarterback there. The pass by Owa, and right there, DeRamo knocks it away. It was good coverage downfield. Out of the shotgun, second and 10. The give to Reed on the end around. Reed cuts it away. Still on his feet, spins. Finally, Miranda has to stop him at the 35. That will be a West Windsor North first down. Tackle by Miranda after a gain of 12 on the run by Reed. 
So Sean Reed on the sweep right, cut against the grain, broke a tackle, and finally Miranda has to get him from behind at the 35-yard line. It's a first down for the Northern Knights. Reed again in motion. This time they fake it to him. Owa keeps it. And Owa will dive across the 39-yard line. Gain of four on the play. Tackle by Cefeli after a gain of five. Second and five now for the night. Same play they ran on the previous play. Of course, this time they didn't give it to Reed. Owa keeps it. 3.35 and the clock is on the move here in the first half. 14-6, Princeton scoring on two consecutive possessions. Play action pass. Oa steps up, running to his left, looking to pick up a blocker, slowed down a little bit by Holman. And then we have a flag thrown in near the end of the play. And we have an injured Princeton player on the far sideline. There's flag on the play. It is Lavoy, who is down on the turf and finally helped up by his teammates. Daquan Holman slowed Owa down. Face masking against the defense. Five yard face mask on the Tigers. And so Owa ended up about a yard short of a first down but the penalty yardage will give the Northern Knights a new set with 3.14 to go. So the run with the penalty is gonna give the Knights Oh, it was forced down. from the pocket. Ready Couldn't find a receiver. And finally it is Holman, number three, who slows him down a little bit there. There the hit by Lavoy, still going. And the marker was thrown at the end of the play. Oa can't escape this time. The pocket closed in on him, and Oa is going to be dropped at the 43. Larry Berry gets to him. Seven on that play, and the sack by Berry. Second and long here for the Knights. 2:40 to go. Remember that the visitors have used the timeout. Princeton has their full three remaining. See if they think about using one here if they stop the Knights for no gain. White split to the right side along with Phelan. Intended for Phelan, off his fingertips, incomplete. And so Princeton does not have to think about using a timeout here. 2.15 to play in the half. Third down. West Windsor North has to get to the Princeton 41 for a first down. Oa with some time, throws it, looking, intercepted. Miranda comes up with it in the middle of the field and he's dragged down at the 32. And so the teams now even in turnovers at one apiece. Interception. Princeton will take over with 2.05 to go in the half. Throw down the middle. Phelan will be deep, but Miranda is going to cut in front of him. And finally, it is Phelan who comes back to make the tackle at the Princeton, well, we'll call it the 32-yard line. So the Tigers have two minutes, five seconds, and three timeouts to try and add to an eight-point lead. Barsamian starts out left, cuts back right, drags a tackler 10 yards. It's a first down, Princeton. Ben Newman grabbed the hold of Barsamian, and Barsamian carried him for five, seven, eight yards. First down, Tigers. They go without the timeout. A 
Again, Barsamian. Again, a big hole to the right, maybe eight yards. Big opening to the right side for Trevor Barsamian. And he will take it into Knights territory. Barsamian, third run. This time he's tripped up near the line, dives forward and will be close to a first down, but we are gonna get a Princeton timeout with 1.18 remaining. It, it looks like we're gonna get a measurement just to see how close Princeton is. Well, we are getting the, uh, the Princeton Tigers. timeout. With 118 left to go. They will use their first timeout. Now currently in Central Jersey Group 3, Moorestown sits on top with 43 power points. They are 5-0. Middletown South is 5-1. Then you've got Lawrence. That's the next opponent for the Northern Knights and Monroe. Currently, that's your top four. On the near sidelines, that is Griffin warming up for a possible field goal. He hit one in the game that we did against Hopewell Valley. It was a 46-yarder. And we talked about that time, that, that's a great weapon that Princeton will have as they close in on the playoffs. And just as it was a great weapon for the Scarlet Knights on Thursday, when the judge hit a 51-yarder for the win. Barsamian has the first down, needed to get to the 48. And it looks like he'll have it by about a full yard. We may get the chains in. Might get a measurement here. Yep, official timeout to measure. And you know what? I think he's going to be a little short. Stretch the chains out and we'll see, but it looks like it's going to be short by about the length of a football. So fourth down, less than a yard to go. Borchert, Lavoy, and Duramo come in along with Olentine. One oh seven to go in this first half. Orchard cutting outside. First down and more. He's out of bounds to stop the clock. His way up for the first down. Princeton first down. We'll see where they mark him out. Gets out of bounds as well. Spot the ball at the 36-yard line. By the way, uh, we just uh, mentioned that third, that big loss to Lawrence last year for West Windsor North. The uh, CVC, the Colonial Valley Conference, has adopted a new mercy rule for high school football. It is in effect. 